So today's conversation is about Bitcoin, Bitcoin integration, CKBTC, and we've got the experts here uh, to tell us all about it. And, um, give us uh, um, kind of the lowdown on what everything is. Um, so let's start with Manu, if you don't mind. If um, So back in December, uh, we, Definity, launched Bitcoin integration. And, uh, you know, we... We didn't make a huge big deal about it. We we put out the press, uh, but then you know we kind of saved a lot of the hype for CKBTC. But Bitcoin integration is kind of the underpinning technology. So do you mind just giving us an update of, or like just a background of what Bitcoin integration is, what makes it unique on the internet computer, and uh, and some of the more like technical, um, I guess like the ELI ELI five uh, specs of of uh, what it is. Cool. Yeah. Hey, Kyle. Hey, everybody. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll do my best to give a quick, uh, a quick intro about that. Um, yes. Yeah, so as you said, in December, we launched something that we call this Bitcoin integration or coding Bitcoin, uh, which enabled Canister smart contracts that run on the internet computer to, um, to work with real Bitcoin on the Bitcoin blockchain. Um, we think that's cool because there's a lot of value in Bitcoin. Um, I mean, obviously, it's the most valuable cryptocurrency uh, at the moment. Um, but there's not so much you can do with it, right? It doesn't really f support full smart contracts. Um, and by having by by doing this integration, we try to remove some of these, uh, I guess, barriers, if you will. Um, but this is this is a difficult uh, this is a difficult thing to do because you know there's no native compatibility between these chains. So we needed to build something. Um, and, and it's already clear, we, we wanted to take a different approach than some, some, some other projects did. So we wanted to really make it in a way that you really only have to trust like the internet computer and the Bitcoin network for this integration to be trustworthy and not do any uh, like centralized parties in the middle. Um, so we don't want that some centralized party issues some wrap token and then call it a day because that's, you know, now you have this risk of this intermediary falling over. Um, so that's what, what we want to do. We wanted to have it like really uh, directly integrated. And if you're familiar with Bit Bitcoin, then uh, I guess, you know, you need really two things to, to control Bitcoin. You, um, you need like a signing key, a secret key. I guess typically you have this in uh, in like a Ledger Nano device or some other some other type of wallet, and you need to be connected to so Bitcoin node. You need to uh, know which UTXOs exist, um, uh, which which uh, what defines how much how much Bitcoin you have. And so we um, as Definity R and D we worked on creating two interfaces that canister developers can take advantage of. Um, one um, that allows this signing functionality such that uh, uh, a canister can programmatically say something like, okay, if I receive ICP from X, then I now sign a Bitcoin transaction. Uh, and the second part is that it can read the Bitcoin blockchain. So it can know when it received Bitcoin and it can send transactions to the Bitcoin network. Uh, and together, this allows a canister smart contract to really programmatically control uh, Bitcoin and, and write smart contracts that, that work with Bitcoin. Does that make sense so far, Kyle? Yeah. And for, uh, can you spend a few seconds before we go on on how this integration works? If you can spend a few seconds on threshold ECDSA or chain key signing as we started calling it. Yeah, absolutely. So... Um, yeah, each each of these two things are are difficult to do. So you need to uh, this canister needs to have now access to the to the UTXO set of Bitcoin, so the all the all the valid Bitcoins that are that are out there. Um, for that, we wrote a special canister that keeps track of this entire set. Uh, that's quite that's quite a lot of state. That's like um, uh, I think something like uh, 30, 30 something gigabytes. Uh, right now, but luckily, our, our 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 canisters can hold a lot of memory, so that that fits. Um, and so how it works is that the replicas of a, of a subnet actually connect to the Bitcoin network and try to learn about all the transactions that happen, and then send this to that Bitcoin canister, uh, such that it can update the UTXO set all the time. 
Uh, and now any other canister can call this Bitcoin canister to learn about the latest Bitcoin uh, UTXOs and Bitcoin balances. So that's one that's one side of the of the story. Yeah, Andrew, go ahead. Can you get to mention? Can you get to mention what the UTXO is for uh, some of us? Of course. Know? Yeah. I, yeah. Sorry, maybe I was not very explained like I'm five. Um, so Bitcoin uses the UTXO model, which is the unspent transaction output model. So there's not like a clear account balance. There's just a set of unspent transaction outputs. Um, and they can, if you use them as an input in a new transaction, that means they're spent. So uh, uh, it's, 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 it's basically some inner detail of, of how, bit, how Bitcoin works that uh, the, the Bitcoins that exist are tracked in these uh, unspent transaction outputs, not in some balance somewhere. Yeah, that makes sense. Thank you. Um, um, yeah, I guess I guess we can. Um, so that that's the the first part of this of this Bitcoin integration. The second part is this signing that you referred to, uh, Andrew. So I think everybody knows if you, if you want to make a digital signature, you get like a secret key and a corresponding public key. And now using the secret key, you can sign things that are that you can verify under the public key. And in Bitcoin, typically, your Bitcoin address is kind of defined as like the hash of a public key or, or something like that. And now, um, if you want to authorize transactions on the Bitcoin blockchain, you create a signature with the secret key, and then you have a valid uh, Bitcoin transaction. But now we want a smart contract on the internet computer to be doing this. Um, and you, uh, this, this managing the secret key is, is a big challenge because... You don't just want the secret key to be in the memory of your uh, of your of your canister smart contract, because now maybe some malicious node provider might see that state and uh, could now run away with the Bitcoin. So that that's not what we want to do. So behind this convenient signing interface that we created, there's a lot of uh, cryptography involved. So this is this functionality that we call chain key signing. Um, so this is essentially a threshold ECDSA protocol, so a threshold signing protocol. What that means is that if the canister says, hey, I want to sign message M, then all the replicas of a subnet, so all the nodes that power a subnet of the internet computer, will collaborate. Each has a, has a part of a secret key, and they now run like a distributed cryptographic protocol to together combine to together create a signature uh, that the canister requested. So what that means is that even though the canister can conveniently request a signature, the corresponding secret key does not exist in one place, but it's always distributed between the nodes of a subnet on the internet computer. That's awesome. Uh, so Manu, is it, so it's it's accurate to say then that the the, Internet computer protocol directly writes to the Bitcoin ledger. Then, right? There's no no middleman in that transaction. Correct. Yeah. So um, exactly. So the to if you if you as a canister want to build a Bitcoin transaction, you first go to the Bitcoin canister to learn which Bitcoins you have. So which ones can be inputs to your Bitcoin transaction. Now on the internet computer, you create a, such a signature that authorizes the transaction. And then you can submit that transaction, which from the IC nodes goes directly to, to Bitcoin nodes. So there's no, at, at no step, um, is there some centralized entity involved. And then I see we got uh, Dieter as well. Uh, welcome, Dieter. My apologies on, uh, uh, I think, I, think uh, I caused a little more headache for you on, on terms of the Twitter app. Um, but let me ask this question. So is, um, you know, makes sense that you'd want one chain to talk with another chain directly. Is this something that a lot of L other L1 chains are doing? So I guess some others are attempting it, but we are the first ones doing it in a really proper way with a very solid foundation. Like as Manu already mentioned, the network integration is something a couple of others have tried and are doing as well as threshold ECDSA, but we only have, we are the only chain that has nice properties of threshold ECDSA, ECDSA in the sense of liveness properties, with which others, the few others doing that, I think don't have. So, so we have a system that's secure and at the same time has liveness properties. So if some nodes go down, 
it still works doing threshold ECDSA signatures, which not everybody can claim of their system. Uh, Dieter, could you spend a few seconds on explaining what liveness properties are? Uh, for yeah, it means that know. the system still works. Yeah, uh, a good question. So it means that the system still works even if some nodes don't collaborate, be it because they are down by by some technical problem or because they don't follow the protocol and want to DOS it, for example. So that's very strong in our setting. So basically, and also maybe to only... add something. Yeah, just let me add something to what Manu explained. So Manu explained it, I think, extremely nicely. And I think, in short, when can summar one can summarize it in a way, everything is completely decentralized in our implementation. It's, it's a network integration that's completely decentralized as well as designing, and that's the beauty of it. So is, is it fair to say that when you're signing a Bitcoin transaction, then, Bitcoin transaction, then you're required to have a threshold of the nodes uh, agree on the signing or provide the, the private key or shares of the private key? However, it's um, just for the system to work in general, it is enough to also have a threshold of the nodes operate properly. And this is how this uh, liveness, uh, or liveness. Right. So we need this. We right. Exactly. Yeah. So we need a certain uh, set of nodes. And if some of nodes uh, that have a key share don't participate, it's fine as well. So this is, so we're, we're still talking specifically about direct Bitcoin integration between the internet computer and Bitcoin. Uh, we haven't even gotten to CKBTC yet, uh, but to kind of prime that, let's talk through what are the limitations of that direct Bitcoin integration. So like, why not just leave it there and, and be happy with, with what we've accomplished? So the direct Bitcoin integration is very nice, but the limitation is that it still does every transaction on the Bitcoin network, which means it incurs the Bitcoin network transaction fees, which is two to three dollars per transaction, per transaction latency of an hour until you have finalization, and also the limited throughput of seven to whatever, 12 transactions per second. So that's not enough for a high volume transaction system. I think that's where CKPTC comes in as a layer two like system. And maybe Manu, do you want to go into how P uh, CKPTC does the thing? Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, so, so as Dieter said, the, 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 the drawbacks of the native integration are that it's real Bitcoin, so you have uh, you know, the good properties of real Bitcoin, but also the, the I guess, the relative slowness and, and expensive transaction fees. Um, so, so we're working on what we call CKBTC, which stands for Chain Key Bitcoin, um, which is a different token. It's a token that lives on the internet computer, um, which represents Bitcoin. So we think that one CKBTC will always be worth one real Bitcoin. And how that works is we're building a canister on the internet computer that builds on top of this direct Bitcoin integration. Um, so by building on this integration, you can send real Bitcoin, so do a real Bitcoin transaction to this canister. So you can the canister can tell you what its, what its Bitcoin address is, and you can now do a real Bitcoin transaction to that Bitcoin address controlled by the canister. And now after a while, the canister sees that you've sent real Bitcoin to it, and it can now give you CKBTC tokens in return. And as I said, these CKBTC tokens, they're, they're a token that live on the internet computer, which means um, you can transact in it very quickly and, and uh, uh, like efficiently and for very low fees. So there you can uh, imagine many applications like tipping small amounts or doing very uh, fast trading. And at the same time, so what you now have, you know, might now have one CKPTC and, and this canister uh, holds the, the underlying Bitcoin. And now at any point in time, whoever has the CKPTC can go to this canister and say, hey, here's my CKPTC back. Please give me the underlying Bitcoin at this Bitcoin address. And now again, this canister, you know, builds on the, the direct Bitcoin integration. So it can now see, okay, you've returned your CKPTC. Now I'll send you the underlying Bitcoin back. Um, yeah, so it's very important to note that this, this conversion between Bitcoin and CKBTC is all done by a canister smart contract, not some, some centralized entity. Um, uh, so, so you can trust it. And this canister always hold all the underlying Bitcoin. It's, it's, it's backed, CKBTC is backed one-to-one -one by real Bitcoin. 
So at any point in time, can you take your CQBTC and uh, ask for the underlying Bitcoin back? In the last few sentences, you really touched on um, on my next question, but I want to really emphasize this. So, because people who come into the inner computer ecosystem and want to use their Bitcoin, and they would they also want to have the speed and, and low transaction fees that a CKBTC can offer, then security is very important. And can you explain how, let's say, how CKBTC is different from something like um, Ethereum's version of a red Bitcoin or Solana's a Solet? Um, on uh, Solana's red coin. Yeah, I think um, in particular the Solana one that you mentioned, uh, the Solana, the SOBTC, uh, was a uh, th that was a in, in in my view a problematic approach. So they they had something you, you know you could you could call it in functionality similar as as what CKPTC tries to 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 achieve, but. The, the conversion between real Bitcoin and this uh, SOBTC was done by a centralized party, uh, namely FTX. Um, so what, what you saw happening is that uh, now when this the centralized party actually got in trouble, now suddenly the, uh, the, the SOBTC token fell a lot in value because you cannot actually redeem it for real Bitcoin anymore. So by having some, so what you see in other places that sometimes there's some centralized party playing a crucial role in the system, uh, which is clearly an extra layer of risk as demonstrated by, by, the, by the issues that the FTX collapse caused for uh, Solid. Yeah, I think that's a great place to pick up. Um, so so we, we kind of moved from... Bitcoin integration was, you know, essentially the underlying technology um, where the internet computer blockchain can actually natively write uh, on the ledger for Bitcoin. Um, that had the limitations of that come with Bitcoin, right? The finality time of having to wait an hour or so, uh, or at least for six um, six confirmations each taken ten minutes. Um, you know, the the transaction costs, the um, and and the, the throughput. Um, we've got to CKBTC, which is more of like a verifiable wrapped Bitcoin, I guess. Um, and and that, you know, that gets you all those benefits of the smart contract. So you get quick speeds, you get, um, you know, quick finality. Uh, but what you're talking about is one of the nice things compared to maybe other wrapped Bitcoin products is the lack of a middleman, right? Because it's it's a smart contract that can write directly to the Bitcoin ledger. So you don't have to trust somebody to hold on to that Bitcoin. Um, so you mentioned FTX. I mean, that was a clear example where FTX accumulated the Bitcoin. You were supposed to be able to swap your so BTC for, you know, for Bitcoin at any time, but then FTX went on and sold or transferred out all that Bitcoin. So then there's no, you couldn't, there's no, nothing left for you to transfer. There's also things like Wintermute had a hack last year for $160 million where their private key got exposed. Um, you know, uh, Mingo Market had another one. There were some technology issues with like Wormhole and Nomad. Um, and so in 2022, we saw almost $3 billion worth of um, these kind of wrapped hacks or, or um, exploits. Uh, so, so I guess is that is that uh, is that kind of the the idea behind CKBTC is that you're you're not trusting this middleman to to be a good to to be a uh, you know a good actor. You're you're essentially just trusting the Bitcoin network and you're trusting the Internet Computer Protocol, uh, and that's and that's kind of the final line. Yeah, exactly. I, I mean, I, you know, at the end of the day, I think smart contracts are all about you know, trusting in the, in, in the, in the technology more than in, uh, you know, like centralized people that can make individual mistakes that, that mess things up. And I think this fits in that, in that thinking very well. So it, yeah, exactly. We try to make sure everything is done by smart contracts and by, you know, the internet computer protocol and the Bitcoin network, and that there's no individual human in between that can somehow, you know, Take the take the money and run, or do crazy, <laughs> crazy investment strategies with the underlying assets. Uh, yeah, that's all the stuff we want to avoid. Maybe to add to this, it's even more so. It's also when this person, so this middle person, can get hacked. It they could be trustworthy, but just there, there's a mistake in their system they use and get hacked. And even though being trusted, they still uh, screwed up. And and 
even though not maliciously. Or, for example, they use the deposited Bitcoin in the bridge for things like doing risky investments, like was the case in other systems. All of those things would be done in our system because it's completely decentralized and it trusts technology, as Manu said. Can can users of CKBTC always see the um, basically the balance of the CKBTC canister? So you always can know whether or not that Bitcoin is still sitting there? Yeah, you can audit the Bitcoin canister. So everybody can audit the Bitcoin canister and can see that it holds the deposits it should hold. This is pretty cool. So it's completely transparent to anybody. Yeah, exactly. So we, we, we did two main steps towards making it easy to verify. Uh, the, the, the most technical answer is that the canister, this canister that actually holds the underlying uh, Bitcoin uh, is owned by the network nervous system. So the, the DAO that governs all of the internet computer. And what that means is that any change to this, uh, any, any upgrade to this canister uh, must go through, through NNS proposals and you know, they will contain the source code and you can verify, uh, you, can, you can inspect the source code and see that there's no uh, you know, no backdoor in there or no, no. Uh, uh, well, you, you can just check the source code. Uh, but that's, of course, quite quite challenging. So what we also built in is that this canister that holds holds the underlying Bitcoin has exposes an HTTP dashboard. So um, canisters on the, on the internet computer can, 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 can host front ends. And that's what, that's what we use here. So you can just go to some URL and then this canister will show you exactly all the Bitcoin uh, that it holds all the uh, the UTXOs that we talked about earlier, and so you can see how, exactly how much value that holds, and you can see you can ask the CKBTC ledger what the supply of CKBTC is. And now you can can always check uh, easily that uh, all the CKBTC BTC supply is backed by real Bitcoin held by that canister, and so you can really go and look at those UTXOs and you can see them on some. Uh, Bitcoin blockchain explorer uh, and convince yourself that way. Just for clarity, Manu, is that is that for each individual in their own sort of Bitcoin account, if you will, or is that like for the whole, like all the Bitcoin on the ICP network? It's for the for the combined. Yeah, that's a that's a very good question. It's it's for the combined thing. So, and and that also makes sense because. If I transfer, suppose I transfer one Bitcoin into the system and now I have one CKBTC in return, but now we might be doing, now, I mean, I have the CKBTC because I want to do quick trading or efficient transactions in it. So now I might send it around and now you might have half of my uh, CKBTC. Uh, but of course the, the, the real underlying Bitcoin did not move. It's still held by that one canister in, the, in one big pool. And that's actually necessary because we want to avoid the expensive Bitcoin transaction fees. So uh, that means that we can very efficiently move CKBTCs around while the underlying assets don't move on the Bitcoin blockchain, which allows us to, to trade for some Satoshis instead of much more. And now you can go to that canister and say, hey, I now have half a CKBTC and I would like to redeem it for, for, for real Bitcoin. And now you would get real Bitcoin back. Does that answer it your question? It does. I kind of have a follow-up question, which is, so that's sort of how it's displayed to us is the collective versus the individual. That said, our individual, like our individual BTCs sort of held on their own addresses or on their own wallets. Like, are there separate pub keys theoretically? Like if I wanted to go find, you know, just where my BTC, came, excuse me, just where my Bitcoin was on the ICB network, is there like a separate pub key for each individual who's theoretically holding Bitcoin on ICP? Um, okay, so we need, to, we need to distinguish two cases, right? So if you have some canister wallet, you can hold real Bitcoin for yourself on the IC with your own public key and your own address. Uh, and this is all completely yours. Um, but now, but this would be talking about real Bitcoin. So Bitcoin on the Bitcoin blockchain which is expensive to move around. So uh, what you can do is move it into, into CKBTC. Now it's held by some, by the CKBTC minter canister is what we call it. 
Um, which is a collective uh, fund, basically. Which and that that's more of a collective fund, it. exactly. Well, I mean, te technically, you know, we have you. We can deposit into different addresses, which you know, convey the information which I see user should be credited the corresponding CKBTCs, um, but it's still one pot. So you don't know exactly which Bitcoins you would get back if you would redeem your CKBTC, um, which, which makes sense because, you know, we need to because we can move CKBTCs around very quickly and we don't want to move the underlying that Bitcoins makes, around to avoid That makes fees. total sense. But so if I'm just using Bitcoin integration and not CKBTC, but I'm for some reason using the native Bitcoin integration on ICP, in that case, I would have my own wallet address. But once I move to CKBTC, my Bitcoin moves to like a collective pool. That's exactly right. Yes, Got exactly. It. Cool. Thank you. I have a follow-up question to this one pod uh, idea that you mentioned um, about security. Because... Um, I know it's still because you have a this the secret key distributed among different uh, nodes, so then it's not one it's not in, not stored in one place. However, wouldn't it be uh, more secure if instead of one big pot you would have pots of uh, I don't know ten Bitcoin sizes, or you would create many many different smaller um, uh, addresses that hold Bitcoin, and then just store um, the mapping of people. And their CKBTC, so whenever someone requests their CK or their Bitcoin back, then you would just pick one of these from one of these uh, pots and then uh, uh, make the conversion back. Yeah, that's an interesting idea. Um, so, I, I mean, I, I guess I think mostly in, in, in the technical limitations. So, at the moment, these things are backed by the same. Like at, at the end of the day, all of this boils down to this chain key signing functionality on the on the internet computer. This is what at the end of the day what what governs the the secret keys that canisters can use to hold real Bitcoin. And at the moment, um, this is held by nodes on different. Uh, like there's two subnets where all the replicas together have you know have have shares of of these of this key. So if we would use that same key but make smaller pots, I don't think that would actually buy you any more security. Um, what we could think of doing is, is having different of these special DCSA keys in the future and do your idea with different pots to somehow limit the blast radius in, in case of some emergency, uh, some, some disaster. But uh, uh, yeah, I'm not sure that's, that's necessary. And let's hope we don't, we don't get there. Exactly. Uh, okay. Yeah, I just was going to circle back to the idea that the, you know, in all of these, you're going to need, it, there, there has to be somebody who owns the canister that's, that's operating this. And, and in the case of CKBTC, you're, is it correct to say the NNS is the owner? So the DAO that operates the internet computer owns that canister? Exactly. Yes, exactly. So if you're, if you're paying close attention to uh, all the NNS proposals that are, that are happening then uh, you might have seen some uh, proposals happening in the last days uh, that that actually already install some of these CKBTC canisters that are that are necessary. Um, yeah, if you scroll through the last ten proposals, you'll you'll see some of those. And so that's the only way we can we can upgrade this. So it's not like Definity has any access to the underlying Bitcoin. Uh, only that canister has 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 access to it. And the only way to change the code that runs on that canister is by making an NNS proposal. And I guess going back to Andrew's question, so there's really nothing that would stop somebody from launching their own canister, like let's say um, a Doge BTC canister, where you know somebody wants the meme coin aspect, and so they they essentially do the wrapping within their canister. Uh, uh, so you could have kind of comparable products to CKBTC, but ones in which the, the ownership of the canister is, is in different hands, correct? Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, yeah, th I'm, like what we built with uh, CKBTC, technically anybody could have built this. Uh, there's no special, uh, uh, I mean, this is purely in the application layer. And if I understand it correctly, then CKBTC is an ICRC1 token? 
Correct. Yes, it follows the the ICRC one token standard, uh, and I think support for ICRC two will be added in the near future. Yeah, nice. That was one of my questions. If it's even upgradable to f future versions of ICRCs, so it can support IC or it can be upgraded to ICRC two or three later on. Uh, exactly. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, yeah. So just to just to be explicit, so the reason why we need a controller for these canisters is because we want to be able to further develop and upgrade them. Um, and to be able to do that in a decentralized way, it's the NNS, the sort of DAO that controls it. And that means we can always submit proposals to enhance the functionality or improve things. Um, uh, yeah, so improve things in a decentralized way. Maybe one more word regarding ICRC2. So this is finalized and will go through an NNS vote rather soon and then be an official ICP standard. Awesome, thanks Dieter. Uh, so let's, let's I, well, I'm gonna recap and then I wanna move on to probably the more fun conversation in this, which is the use cases that we can, we can use CKPTC for, because that kind of gets, I think that makes it more real in terms of how uh, impactful this is. So, um, so just to kind of recap, right? So Bitcoin integration on the internet computer, can't be done by any other chain. It allows directly to write to the Bitcoin ledger. And then if you leverage that technology, you can do essentially like a natively wrapped Bitcoin uh, product that um, essentially reduces or almost significantly reduces like the surface area for hacks and exploits uh, with the product, right? So it's a, it's a much more secure product than, than what's currently being offered. Um, the, the so I want to move on, uh, and I want to I want to be careful with this because I know I know there are some pro projects that are um, looking forward to using CKBTC, um, and so I don't want to mention them by name because they they've got their own uh, launch plans and marketing plans, but just kind of high level, like what you know when you combine CKBTC with you know kind of the the fully on chain tech stack that is the internet computer. Is there kind of like some cool use cases you guys can see coming out in the next, uh, you know, this year kind of a deal? Or um, is this, are we just gonna basically copy DeFi uh, from 2021? Very good question. Let me be, maybe take a stab at this one. So if you look at, let's say, co more copying use cases from somewhere else, it's DeFi, of course, like think of, Decentralized exchanges like automated market makers, AMMs running on the IC, being able to use now all of Bitcoin liquidity, which is pretty nice. But I mean, other chains have the same thing, but with wrapped tokens, which is ma much less nice in a trust model perspective for functionally very similar. But for example, now let's look at IC capabilities. IC is so powerful that allows one to run order book exchanges fully on chain, for example. Uh, this is not possible on Ethereum for the limitations there, which we have in terms of uh, memory availability and memory cost and, and so on. So we can have an order book exchange fully on chain, the order book being on chain and using liquidity uh, of Bitcoin, which is a pretty nice thing. So we can have lots of interesting trading pairs coming up here and everything without an intermediary. So I think this is very specific that not many can claim to have. And yeah, other use cases like think of SNS decentralization sales. So these are currently done in ICP. So you can bring in your Bitcoin liquidity, um, exchange it. So mint your CKBTC and then uh, use your CKBTC on an exchange to get ICP and particip participate in a decentralization sale with these ICP. So Bitcoin liquidity indirectly used for a use case, or maybe in the future, these decentralization sales might be possible directly in Bitcoin. This I don't know about, might be an option to be uh, implemented in, in the future. Or for example, think of use cases like NFTs. So you could use Bitcoin to buy NFTs, like your favorite uh, image from an NFT collection, or you could buy land in a metaverse, so a land NFT token with Bitcoin. I think that's a very interesting use case because there is a lot of liquidity available in Bitcoin that might be interested in participating in such use cases. Or think in a more down-to-earth use case like uh, SocialFi. Think of OpenChat, you have your friends there, you go to dinner, um, 
your friend pays the dinner for you and you reimburse them with Bitcoin or chain key Bitcoin sent on open chat. A very nice use case. You just send them a text message containing some satoshis that covers uh, the friend's dinner expense they did for you. So I think that's a very nice use case, peer-to-peer -peer money transfer using our nice social apps. So I guess these are kind of interesting use cases that are coming up. And because the IC allows for those things going beyond what blockchain can do, like full social applications, social networks, chat applications being on chain, you can now uh, target use cases where you use those CKBTC on chain. And essentially, CKBTC is just a, a lightweight twin of Bitcoin being fully on chain, but everything else being Bitcoin, like, like the value but just uh, transferable in a fast way, in a cheap way, and with high throughput. So I think that opens up a huge space of use cases. I have a, yeah, Manu? Uh, yeah, I, I just wanted to add to, to uh, so I think, I think Dieter explained it super well. Um, I would like to add that, so when we launched the Bitcoin integration, I think, you didn't immediately see a huge amount of projects jumping on it, right? I mean, some some projects were very quick, and uh, I guess like Spinner had had their support for for Bitcoin very very early on. But there's also many big IC projects that that that, that still don't support this native Bitcoin integration. And I think what's important to realize is that there's a huge difference. Like this Bitcoin integration was purely targeted for uh, canister developers that needed to build on these APIs. Um, to, to bring some functionality to, to the users. And I mean, it's still like, we try to make these APIs very simple, but there's still a lot of things you need to think about because you're integrating with a different blockchain, right? So you need to at least understand how UTXOs work and, and things like that. Whereas in CKBTC, things will be much easier to integrate for, uh, for uh, developers on the internet computer. So it's just, um, it's just a token on the IC following the token standard um, so because that's so simple, anybody that can work with, with ICRC1 tokens will immediately be able to work with CKBTC. And that's also why I expect much more widespread adoption, uh, for, for, for CKBTC. And it's also easier to just send around between friends, as Dieter said, or, or use it as a tip in, in social platforms and so on. Um, I have a question that actually I received from the community, and I'm curious. It's kind of a, is it technically possible question? So I know that there is a, a front-end hosted a, uh, of Uniswap on the near computer. So Uniswap's uh, front-end can be hosted on the near computer in a canister, and that can, um, using threshold ECDSA or Chinky signing, create transactions and swap tokens on, on Uniswap. Would it then be possible to have let's say, a pair in which you can swap native Bitcoin to any other um, cryptocurrency that is supported by Uniswap? Yes, that's possible, definitely. So you need a direct integration with Bitcoin. So the, the DEX wouldn't... Okay, what I'm referring to is if you have an exchange on the internet computer, it's possible that it can exchange native Bitcoin for any other token uh, listed on this exchange, which is pretty powerful, but that wouldn't be CKBTC. That and would require what, a direct integration with the native token of this exchange. And what about Uniswap being able to, because now we have the front end on the net computer and now the other canisters could communicate with this, could Uniswap do this swapping? So then the maybe the native Bitcoin lives on the net computer on one of the canisters, but that canister can communicate with uh, um, the Ethereum smart contracts through uh, threshold ECDSA, and then the swapping would happen through that. Is that something that could be possible? Am I Good off? question. I think currently Uniswap uses ERC20 tokens only, right? I think that's correct. So I think what you want would mean a major extension of Uniswap such that Uniswap uses the, uses the IC technology of native Bitcoin integration. So an integration between the IC and the Ethereum network, if we talk about Uniswap and Ethereum, and then this might be possible, but it would mean a, quite an extension of Uniswap to achieve that. But I think that should be doable. Yeah. So then Uniswap could essentially leverage our threshold ECDSA algorithm, but it would mean integrating the two blockchains like Ethereum and ICB, which is actually a project I'm currently working on. 
via CFM, right? No, so the integration, we started working with a small team on the integration of the internet computer blockchain uh, with the Ethereum network. I guess that's a good point, right? We're, we're not uh, stopping with Bitcoin, right? It's, we're not at the finish line. Exactly. So Bitcoin is the first one. It was in some way an easier one than, than Ethereum. The next one we are starting now is Ethereum. Ethereum integrations. The Ethereum integration is extremely powerful because it will bring all ERC-20 tokens over, all NFTs. So that's extremely powerful. So I am targeting around 100 interactions with the Ethereum blockchain per second in terms of querying smart contracts or sending transactions per subnet that we enable this feature on which I think should be good enough throughput for many use cases. So that would allow us or in a computer smart contract to buy an Ethereum based uh, NFT, for example, natively. Yes, you could, an NFT, you could have an NFT trading platform on the IC trading in Ethereum tokens uh, without using an intermediary between the two networks, exactly. So trustless nice. integration, again, using threshold ECDSA and the network integration. Threshold so ECDSA is already be- there, and now we're working on the network integration. And then, of course, the next things are various chain key tokens. So we will soon uh, issue documentation uh, for this chain key uh, Bitcoin, and I titled the documentation for the How It Works section, not chain key Bitcoin, but more generically, chain key tokens, to already hint at... Uh, what will be coming in a later in a later phase? But yeah, that's something maybe for another uh, Twitter space. But yeah, just to let you know what's happening behind the scenes currently. What will be a bit more public soon? Dieter, I love how you're just dropping like casually uh, groundbreaking, you know, uh, tech advances of yeah, we're world natively do Ethereum, and you know, you'll be able to buy uh, NFTs on the IC in Ethereum, and it won't be a big deal. Um, but let's so just kind of changing the conversation back onto the use cases. Is there any? Uh, can you guys imagine anything? So obviously SNS is going live uh, with our first um, sale in, a, in I don't know uh, some period of time in in the near future. Um, is there any kind of uh, unique use cases you can see by combining the SNS and CKBTC? Uh, that's a great question. I, I mean, maybe a, a small thing. I just having more different uh, tokens that can easily be, be be changed. I guess more ICRC one tokens around. I think they'll just benefit the, the the liquidity of all these all these tokens, which I guess is important for SNSs as well, right? You want that there's a lot of stuff to trade against. Um, uh, I think Dieter mentioned like it's an easy way to now bring your Bitcoin into the internet computer and with that like without going through centralized parties and with that you could use your bitcoin and trade it to 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 participate in sns so it can bring liquidity and that can help fund projects uh yeah i guess those are the first things uh that i can think of great great appreciate that um uh, let's go on that we have a couple questions submitted over twitter um let's go to so uh twitter user magic point asks how does ckbtc and its capabilities compare to lightning network in terms of scalability cost ease of use micropayments implementation possible adoption what uh what do you guys say on that uh m- maybe i could go first Dita. you can you can feel free to jump in uh so, I mean, there's a lot of um, uh, there's a lot in common between the two, right? I guess the goal is is is, is the same. We want to have cheap Bitcoin transactions that are fast and uh, scalable and, and and low fees. Um, uh, of course, Lightning takes a very specific approach to that. So, uh, it, it it's it's all channels, right, that are locked in in in, in multi-sig uh, uh, wallets on 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 Bitcoin. Um, and so now you follow like a, a path of, of, of one-to-one channels, uh, which is how you can do how you can do fast payments. Um, with CKBTC, you can also do fast, uh, fast and low fee Bitcoin payments, but it's a different approach. Here, it's still uh, there's still a ledger which contains all transactions. Um, so uh, 
uh, whereas in Lightning, of course, not all transactions are committed to the Bitcoin blockchain. Um, uh, and I guess, I guess with Lightning, you might have more risks with individual nodes, uh, uh, not allowing certain transactions maybe. Well, of course, that's, that, that, that's not possible with CKBTC because here it's not like a one-to-one, -one, but it's just a consensus thing. Um, of, on the flip side, of course, for CKBTC, you need to trust both the internet computer and Bitcoin, which is not the case for Lightning. Right. So in, I guess in Lightning, you, you still have to trust BT, BTC, uh, the Bitcoin network and the Lightning network um, because it, you know, even though it interacts natively, there's still uh, a tech stack there that you have to trust. Um, I'll add to it that's too right. because... Uh, so rather than the Lightning Network, you're trusting IC the ICP. Um, I'll also add uh, um, that the I know within the Bitcoin community, like Lightning Network is a is a safe word uh, that's a trusted technology. Uh, the limitations that I know are um, one is liquidity. It's hard, you know, like like Manu was saying, there's channels that that it has to pass through. And if the channel doesn't have, let's say you want to send half a Bitcoin, but the channel needed to go through doesn't have a half a Bitcoin of liquidity, then you can't process that transaction. Um, so that won't be the case in C CKBTC. Um, and then separately, there um, one of the problems talked within the Bitcoin community is the fact that all of the application level of Lightning Network is basically running on AWS or Azure, right? So, you know, Strike is probably the most popular app. It's running on a cloud provider. Um, it's also running through Google Play and, and the App Store on Apple. And so obviously with the internet computer, you can build your tech stack completely on chain, govern it by a DAO if, if that's the direction you want to take. And then that provides a front end that is more maybe trustworthy or less centralized. And then, that's uh, a great point, yeah. Uh, the other question is from um, Dominic Buker. Future, hopefully I say that right. Uh, if I control a subnet, could I steal the Bitcoin from canisters running on that subnet? Technically, yes. Yeah. So some we have two subnets that hold the these chain key uh, signing keys that that I talked about earlier. So the ones um, that are used to answer the signing requests from canisters. And if you were to manage to break into uh, sufficiently many of them, then uh, you could reconstruct the, the signing key and, and, and steal the underlying assets. Um, we, of course, you know, think this is a very far-fetched, uh, you know, we don't think this is a realistic concern um, because there are many nodes that are, you know, in different places uh, in the world. They're, they're actually independent uh, uh, as opposed to, as you say, maybe all running on AWS and actually Amazon controls a lot of it. Um, we also have a lot of proactive key resharing there. So uh, um, uh, the key shares are constantly being refreshed. So even though the secret remains the same, each part that each machine has is changes over time. So if you would want to pull off this attack, you would need to actually break into many of these machines at the same time or like in a, in a, in a short uh, time span. Um, yeah, so so the answer to this question is technically yes, but we think that it's uh, it's a quite secure approach that we're taking. Thanks, Manu. And then uh, I know Cake Maker's been waiting patiently, basically from the very start. So um, let's uh, promoted uh, Cake. I promoted you to speaker, and uh, if you want to ask a question of these experts, uh, shoot away. Thanks a lot. I just wanted to ask one question. Do you have anything anything in uh, in mind for ETH integration, like CK ETH, uh, anything in the roadmap? So I mentioned this before once. Yeah, so, so once uh, the Ethereum integration will be done, so I can't give a timeline for this, then of course we would launch also a CK ETH token using the same approach. Just the underlying network integration approach will be a bit, bit different to Bitcoin. But essentially, it's all trustless. Uh, and yeah, the, the approach of CK tokens is very general. So Manu explained how we did CK Bitcoin. And for CK ERC20 tokens, it would be analogous, a bit different because there's no UTXOs to manage. But in the end, yeah, it, it's it's the same blueprint, how you build this uh, CK BTC canisters and you use some form of direct native integration with the underlying chain, if that explains the question. 
Got it. So I'm, I'm assuming that once it's done, it can support um, USDC or any ERC-20 stable tokens as well, right? So this would be the natural consequence when we do ERC-20 chain key tokens, yes. So All once right, we have an Ethereum integration, there is nothing in the way of doing that. Just okay. interject here, the, the Helix built on their computer is already planning to support uh, USDC and other other stable coins that are uh, ECDSA or they are, that are using the digital signature ECDSA. So because their computer has this uh, chain key signing, that, that means that we already can support 80% of all cryptocurrencies uh, uh, on their computer. If Dieter, can you correct okay. me if that's, uh, that's not correct? That's right, yes. So actually, I think those guys already implemented some homegrown impl integration with the Ethereum network using some relay services to get uh, USDC onto the IC or into their trading platform at least. So USDC is coming a lot sooner than, than one might think, which is, which is kind of cool. Got it, thank you. Uh, I just have one more question. Uh, it's not technical, but uh, you know, liquidity is, is, is main issue uh, when we introduce CKBTC. So is, is Definity planning to do anything to attract more liquidity um, or you know, connecting with some mining platforms, companies to bring this awareness into the Bitcoin community at the moment? I think it's a more of a question for me and Kyle. Um, and I, I want to say yes, but I don't want to say a lot more. So in, uh, in the upcoming weeks, there will be a few things coming up that, uh, that I, I can't talk about now. It's, uh, it's an yeah, February so. is going to be an exciting month. Thank you so much. I don't have any other questions. Thank you. Thanks, Cakemaker. Appreciate the questions. And yet, um, everyone get your sleep now because February is going to be a pretty bonkers month and you're you're not going to want to uh, be sleeping on that. Um, I do want to, I know just my thoughts, put a question in um, in the chat uh, or in the, the space thread. Uh, so I do want to address that. I, I was laughing when I read it because it's kind of, I know, Manu, Dieter, you guys have been working long days. You've been uh, head down getting this uh, BTC integration out and then CKBTC. Um, and now that they're live, uh, the next question is, okay, well, what's next? So do you guys mind giving us any kind of update on what might, what else might be on the BTC roadmap uh, for, for Definity or have we kind of reached the end? I think for for the for the BTC roadmap, I think this is the 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 last step of the things that we've initially planned. Um, like we think with with this, I think uh, it's kind of like a complete complete story, right? Um, so I think then the focus will shift more towards other integrations, maybe. Um, and, and of course, I mean, if you just look at our, our public roadmap at internetcomputer.org/roadmap, um, you see that we have a lot of plans to, to to work on right so uh uh yeah we won't get bored uh, anytime soon and i want to add to this question as well because i think for us uh, mortal humans that are non-cryptographers the most exciting developments are just about to come so while manu and the uh, dita and the, the, the team the uh, definitive the teams finished working on not finished but they're close to finishing working on the Bitcoin integration now it's about all of the devs and all the developers, canister developers, to pick up the slack and really have, find creative ways of using Bitcoin on the inner computer, and also to have some of the Bitcoin liquidity enter the, the inner computer network. So, for us as end users who are using these devs um, on the daily, I think the the exciting parts or the more visible aspects will will come to light very soon in the upcoming months and, and years. Andrew, that's a great segue into a point I want to make. So I'm looking through who's listening on this um, on this call, and I'm seeing a lot of developers. And so I do want to say uh, there's good documentation out there. Um, I'm going to post a couple links in after this call ends. I'm going to post a couple links in the thread to give you some um, starting points in terms of how to uh, you know some developer docs on integration, and then a couple blog posts and and um, and such, so so that if you're listening to this now, look in the next few minutes, um, and those docs should be there. If you're listening later, uh, they should already be in the thread. Um, but yeah, so the next step is 
let's get some amazing apps out there utilizing CKBTC or even direct Bitcoin integration, depending on what your use case is. And um, let's see this thing flourish. Uh, Manu and, and Dieter, I do want to give you guys a chance. Is there anything, um, any final points, anything we missed in this conversation or, or last words you want to leave us with? Uh, I think we covered it quite well. Uh, so yeah, as you said, I'm super excited what people are going to build on this. Uh, I just want to mention also, if, you, if you're trying to build on this, you run into any issues, please reach out on the forum. We, we do actually keep an eye on that. So, uh, uh, you know, like we're happy to help and uh, make this whole thing a success. Right. I'm also looking forward very much to seeing what the community will build. I know already of some exciting things that are being built currently. I'm sure there's much more in the pipeline we don't know about yet. And if you're not a developer but a user and you hold Bitcoin yourself, once the CKBTC launches, uh, just please try it out and send a few, not a few, send a few, a few satoshis and then see how it works and, and you can send your CKBTC around the uh, computer. All right, guys, this was this was a great chat. We're, we're coming up on time. And uh, Manu, Dieter, I, I want to thank you guys for your time um, and then also in, encourage you to get back to work because uh, we're all looking forward to the, the next amazing announcements. Um, so <laughs> <Will do. laughs> uh, no, no time off, no rest for the weary here. And uh, everyone, thanks for listening. And again, uh, I think Manu gave you some uh, great advice in terms of if you're interested in getting involved, go go to the forums. Andrew gave you the advice if you've got some Bitcoin and you want to bring it onto the IC, uh, let's uh, let's go ahead and do that. And um, everyone else, we uh, just look forward to uh, seeing how how this evolves. Um, we're we're saying uh, 2023 is DeFi comeback after the the rough year that 2022 was, and, and CKBTC is a big a big part of that storyline.